Under the Speaker's announced policy of January 5, 2011, the gentleman from California, Mr. Gallagher, is recognized for 60 minutes as the designee of the Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the subject of my special order. Without objection. Mr. Uh, Speaker, as the author of the legislation creating the Ronald Reagan Centennial Commission, I've asked, I was asked by the Reagan Foundation to host a special order this afternoon and I'm honored to have many of my colleagues here to join us on the floor today. As a fellow Californian, I had the great privilege of spending some time with President Reagan in my early years here in Congress. And, and I can tell you that uh, those times will be etched in my mind forever. Coincidentally, my own personal residence happens to be almost adjacent to the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library, in fact, only uh, a few hundred yards away in, in Simi Valley, California. I simply can't say enough about how grateful I am for the opportunity to have known Ronald Reagan. I could go on for hours, but we have other members that I want to yield to this afternoon from all across the country and uh, stand back and yield to my colleagues and then uh, uh, have enough time where maybe I can wrap it up. At this point, I would like to uh, yield to uh, my good friend Steve Stivers from uh, the state of Ohio uh, for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank the gentleman from California for yielding me time. In my office, I have a picture of President Ronald Reagan with a quote from January 25, 1988, and it says, after all our hard-fought victories earned through the patience and courage of every citizen, we cannot, must not turn back. We will finish our job. How could we do anything else? We're Americans. These thought-provoking words from President Reagan still inspire us today. We're facing a number of challenges in our country today, a tough economy, fierce competition for jobs from nations like India and China, and fighting two wars with determined enemies who are committed to destroying the American way of life. President Reagan's words remind us that while we face difficult challenges, we must face them together not as Democrats or Republicans, but as Americans, because we're all in this together. His actions lived up to his own, world, own words. He rolled up his sleeves, worked with, how, with members on both sides of the aisle, and provided leadership to move America forward. Today, with a Republican House, a Democratic-led Senate, and administration, we only need to look to President Reagan's work with Speaker Tip O'Neill on Social Security reform in 1983 to learn an important lesson. It shows us today that you can be successful in making a good faith effort to work together toward a common goal if you work together and don't least lose sight of your core principles. America is a shining city on a hill and will always be uh, living President Reagan's legacy. Uh, you know, we need to honor his optimistic spirit by living and leading by his example. I'd like to join my colleagues in honoring President Reagan on the 100th anniversary of his birth. He was truly one of our great presidents, a man who understood what it meant to be an American leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you very much, Steve. At this point, I'd like to yield uh, two minutes to the gentleman from California on the other side of the aisle, my good friend, John Garamendi. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I was on my way out the door when I realized that uh, this special order was going to be on uh, President Reagan. And as I was walking out the door, I recalled a picture that's been on my family's wall for a long time. Uh, it was a picture of President Ronald Reagan. I'm kind of standing to one side, and he's bending over, and he's shaking the hand of my daughter. It was in the White House. This was in the 80s when I was in the California legislature. And embodied in that picture is so much the character of Ronald Reagan. 
the, the smile, the bright eyes, the enthusiasm, greeting a young girl. She was about eight years, about seven years old at the time. And you can just see that he wanted to spend that moment with her and to give to her his enthusiasm for life, his enthusiasm for America. And that picture's always been there, and every now and then some of my Democratic friends, uh, including a president, she said, what's that doing in this house? And I said, that's a very special moment in the life of my daughter, Christina. But that's the way Ronald Reagan was. I was in uh, California when he became the president and uh, actually came into the legislature the day he left office. And he set the stage in California for much of what is good there, and he certainly did that for America also. So I joined with my colleagues on the Republican side and colleagues on the Democratic side to say, a very special man, a very special man in the life of America and a very special man in my life and in our daughter's life. Thank you for the time. I yield back. Thank you. Thank John very much. I'd just like to say in listening to uh, the gentleman from California, uh, when we were working on this bill, uh, it got a little complicated at the end, but you know what the, the simplest part of making this bill work? I did not have one individual on either side of the aisle say, no, Elton, I, I, don't, I can't uh, be a co-sponsor. Uh, I don't think there's uh, any time in history that I've had as many people agree on. I, we can't get that many people to agree on what day of the week it is around here. but. And uh, uh, it, it was very uh, uh, special to me to hear the comments from the folks on the other side of the aisle. While they might, may have disagreed with him on certain policy, uh, I don't know that anyone disagreed on the man's integrity and uh, uh, his, his uh, compassion for this country and uh, how committed he was to make it a better place. And with that, he was able to get a lot of things done on the other side of the aisle that he wouldn't have otherwise been able to do. Thank you very much, John. At, at this time, I'd like to yield uh, to my friend, the gentlelady from Kansas, Lynn Jacobs. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the gentleman from California for yielding me time. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. With those words, President Reagan felled not only a wall dividing a city, but an ideology that divided the world. I carry a piece of that wall with me today, and though 20 years have passed, I am struck by the enormity of what this used to represent, and the courage, conviction, and character of the man who stared down the Soviet empire and won. President Reagan was not just A, he was the great communicator. But it wasn't his style that made the difference. It was his content and corresponding action. Too often, rhetoric is thrown around in this town with little thought and even less action. As we celebrate this 100th birthday of President Reagan, I desire that we can remember that not only did President Reagan inspire us with hope for a new morning in America, but he took real action that led a country waiting in gas lines on the brink of nuclear war and reminded us all that we truly are a shining city on the hill. With that, I yield back. Thank you very much, uh, Lynn. And uh, at this time, I would uh, yield to the, uh, the gentleman from uh, uh, South Carolina, Jeff Duncan, for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank my colleague from California for hosting us out there recently at the Reagan Library. What an inspiration it was to be at the Reagan Library and to understand what President Reagan did and the man Ronald Reagan did for liberty, not just in the United States, but also around the world. Today, I join my colleagues in honoring one of my true heroes, Ronald Reagan. It's fitting that we pay tribute to Reagan during a time when conservatives are once again waging battle against dangerous and out-of-control federal spending. President Reagan understood the dangers of government expansion all too well. In his famous A Time for Choosing speech, he called America to action because, and I quote, if we lose freedom here, 
There's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on earth. This was our rendezvous with destiny. As we in the Congress who uphold Reagan's values continue toward that rendezvous with destiny, we should keep Reagan's thoughts about government at our forefronts, at the forefronts of our minds. As I walk the halls of Congress, his words reverberate in my ears every day that man is not free unless government is limited. You have to wonder what Reagan would say to the out of control government growth as we see in this administration. I learned a lot of politics and about politics from President Reagan. And one particular qu quote has resonated with me about how we should live our lives. He, sh he said that we should not carry a banner of pale pastels but one of bold colors, which make it unmistakably clear where we stand on the issues. I've always tried to live my life that way, so let me be bold today and say in honor of President Reagan that I believe in God, I believe in the United States Constitution, I believe that government spends too much money, borrows too much money, and indebts the American people. And I believe that by protecting liberty in this country, that our nation once again will be a shining city on the hill. When President Reagan spoke of that shining city, it inspired Americans to greatness. It inspired them to strive for something that is beyond comprehension at times. He spoke about a new day in America. I think that honoring President Reagan and remembering what he did inspires me as a congressman and others to help us once again be a shining city for America, a shining city for liberty, a shining city for those who believe in freedom. Let us once again strive for a new day in America. Thank you, Mr. Reagan. Thank you very much, Jeff, and I really enjoyed you coming out to California and, and, and getting an opportunity to really enjoy the Reagan Library. It's uh, truly uh, a place that uh, uh, every American should have an opportunity to visit at one time or another. It's pretty inspiring. Thank you, Jeff. At, at this point, I'd like to uh, uh, recognize uh, uh, Michael Grimm. Uh, Michael? Mr. Speaker, I'd like to join my colleagues in celebrating the 100th anniversary of the birth of President Ronald Reagan this past Sunday. President Reagan has left a lasting mark on our world, inspiring people to turn to democracy. He often spoke of freedom and made it a driving force behind his foreign policy. During his presidency, Reagan was instrumental in the collapse of the Soviet Union. He worked tirelessly and with the words, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall, he helped bring freedom to people under Soviet control. He left behind a legacy known for the spread of democracy and freedom throughout the world. Reagan also understood the value of conservative economic policies. In a 1982 address, he said, and I quote, we don't have a trillion dollar debt because we haven't taxed enough. We have a trillion dollar debt because we spend too much. 30 years later, this message couldn't be more true. While Reagan may be best known for leading our country through a strong economic recovery or for the fall of the Soviet Union, the great communicator was known for his optimism. I hope that Americans can once again find that optimism as we move forward to put power back into the hands of the people. By returning to the same conservative principles on which Reagan relied, I am optimistic that we can restore the honor, individual liberties, and economic prosperity that once defined our great nation. Mr. Speaker, thank you. I yield back the rest of my time. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. And